God bless you. Good evening. We welcome you once again to a Tuesday evening uh, study moments, Bible study, and to this worship opportunity. We're grateful and thankful to the Lord Jesus Christ for letting us be present here once again. Uh, it's our prayer that uh, God will bless you out of what is going to be said here tonight. Lord, we thank you for your spirit. We thank you for your guidance and keeping us and protecting us from all hurt, harm, and danger. Now we pray that you would touch each one of us who join it in as we look at your word tonight and learn what it is you want us to receive. Bless us that we may grow thereof. In Jesus we ask it. Amen. Uh, <clears throat> since uh, Pentecost, uh, 1st of June, we've been uh, dealing with uh, what have followed uh, what we call post um, Pentecost, uh, the growth of the church. Mm -hmm. and we've been walking through the first chapters, the second chapter of Acts down to uh, the fourth chapter of Acts. And today we're going to go a little further. We're going to close out chapter four. Uh, the book of Acts, the growth of the church, and then we're going to introduce just a portion of the fifth chapter of Acts, and we'll take up there the next time we gather. But uh, uh, these lessons are very important. Last week we had a little discussion uh, with Rachel, and uh, and we talked, uh, we bounced off of the text that dealt with. Uh, in the fourth chapter of Acts, where it talks about, um, in the 29th verse of the fourth chapter of Acts, where it says, Now, Lord, look on thy threats and grant uh, to your servants that with all boldness they may speak your word. That's right. Uh, with boldness. And then we, uh, verse 30, by stretching out your hand to heal that signs and wonders may be done through. The name of your holy servant Jesus is done by him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to close um, briefly in just a second this section. Uh, verse 31, and when they had prayed, yeah. the place where they were assembled together was shaken. Something happens when we come together. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And something always happened, dynamic and forceful. Mm -hmm. When prayers come to people together and we pray, were assembled together, the place was shaken, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. Yes. Right. And they spoke the word of God with boldness. Yes. That's extremely important. And then there's a sudden shift in the text, mm -hmm. a shift in this early church, an early ministry. Amen. Amen. Um, in verse 32, the multitude of those who believed were of one heart and one soul, neither did anyone say that any of the things he possessed was his own, mm -hmm. but they had all things in common. Now, if you remember, we hear that same expression uh, in the second chapter, uh, down in verses 42 through 44, 46. Amen. Amen. But here we are again. Those who believe, those who believe, those who believe, it's based on those who believe, believe what? In the signs, the wonders of the Lord Jesus Christ and those who were filled yeah. with the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit. Uh, and a one heart and one soul, neither did anyone say that any of the things he possessed was his own, but had all things common. That's very important yeah. here. And then verse 33, and the great power, the apostles gave witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. And great grace, yeah. great grace was upon them all. Nor was anyone among them who lacked. Mm. Amen. For all who were possessors of land, who uh, or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of the things they were sold yeah. and laid them at the apostles' feet and they distributed to each as 
anyone had need. And that was one name, Barnabas, 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 amen, who was a helper, amen, a helper. Um, and in verse 33, uh, 6, it talks about uh, he, his name meant actually encouragement, amen. Right. Having land, sold it, and brought the money, laid it at the apostles' feet. And then uh, chapter 5, it says, but, start with the word but, amen. Mm -hmm. Notice how the third, or fourth chapter closes, laid it at the apostles' feet, but yeah. a sudden shift. They all had come. They all had things in common. No one lacked anything. But a certain man named Ananias, uh -huh. with his wife, with Sapphira, his wife, sold a possession uh -huh. and kept back part of the proceeds. His wife also, uh -huh. being aware of it, uh -huh. brought a certain part and laid it at the apostles' feet. Now, in this chapter, the previous chapter that was just read, chapter four, the latter part, amen, they, there was a gift of boldness, mm -hmm. where they spoke the word of God with boldness yeah. that came through the power of the Holy Spirit, that they witnessed with boldness, mm -hmm. amen. Yeah. Now, when you get to chapter uh, five, you cannot uh, isolate chapter 5 and chapter 4. Right. Chapter 4 and chapter 5 are twins. Yeah. I'll say that again. They they go together. They are actually one unit. Mm -hmm. They're not separate. They're one unit. It's one of the passages that has a cause and effect uh, thought here. Amen. Yeah. Uh, Luke is, is describing the effects of the church. Mm -hmm. yeah. The church. And if you go down uh, in uh, verse 11 uh, of the fifth chapter, uh, Luke, the physician, introduces the word church for the first time. Mm. Uh, it says, so great fear came upon all the church. Yeah. Up in that time, Luke, amen, in this whole writing from uh, uh, from in um, from chapter one all the way down to chapter four, he never mentions church. But now in verse eleven, he says, "So great fear came upon all the church." Mm -hmm. Amen. So, so, so this is important. He, 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 he lets us know that 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 what is described here is the effectiveness of the church. Yeah. Now. First, he tells us in chapter four, there were signs and wonders yeah. that was done among the people of Jerusalem. Yeah. Power, the power was being released through them. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. And when, you, yeah. and when the Holy Ghost gets you, power will be released. Amen. Amen. Now, yeah. now what happened? Lives were changed. Reconciliation, healings, and joy were the evidence that the church was alive with the Holy Spirit. Yeah. The church was growing and it was dynamic. Yeah. That's what happened. The church was moving. It was it was it was it was not static. It was it was going somewhere. Yeah. Now Luke tells us about an essential ingredient of a great church mm -hmm. here. It's an unlimited commitment to Christ and to each other. Yeah. Did you see that? Yeah. So, so you cannot isolate chapter four, amen, from chapter five. Yeah. I'm gonna keep saying that because I'm gonna close with something here that's very interesting. It's it's a unit, amen. He said it's an it's an unlimited commitment to Christ and each other which is expressed in unrestrained loyalty. Yeah. Loyalty, loyalty, loyalty. If you are part of the church, the living church, then you ought to have a sense of a loyalty to Christ and to each other. That's right. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Now, now he gives us this narrative description 
of this ingredient, this ingredient of the church. And he uses two illustrations, one to show what loyalty really is. Yes. Amen. Amen. Loyalty is sharing. Yes. Loyalty is looking out for each other. Loyalty is making sure that not any other body lacks. Yes. Amen. And, and the other uh, uh, description he show is, is what happens when it is lacking. Mm. Amen. Amen. It's a unit. The first is, is very positive. Amen. Everybody, amen, uh, uh, on the same level. Yes. And the second is, is equally negative. Amen. There are those who, who, who don't join in the loyalty agreement. Come on now. Right. Luke is, 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 is generous in his praise of Barnabas. When he gets to Barnabas, he, he, he lifts Barnabas as one that demonstrates loyalty. Yes. My God, he's, yes. he's loyal. He's loyal. He's, he's honest. Yes. Am I right about it? Yes. But then when he shifts later in the fifth chapter, Ananias and Sapphira uh, he lifts an example of those who who are are, are not loyal. They're unloyal. They are, right. Amen. They they deny in a sense of loyalty. Yeah. Praise the Lord. So, in chapter five of Luke, uh, in chapter five verse eleven, Luke uses the word church. Yeah. So I want to focus on church. Church. Yeah. For the first time, church. The Greek word used here. Uh, is ecclesia, ecclesia. It's the original meaning was an assembly called together. Yeah. Ek, ek means from or out of. Uh, ecclesia is a root of kelis, to call. In Luke time, the word was used for a body of citizens called together to discuss the affairs of a local community or state. And the Septuagint, uh, the Greek translation of the Old Testament ecclesia is a word selected to translate the Hebrew word for the assembly of the people of Israel. But simply means a state, it means called out of a call together. Yeah. Amen. That's what we that's where we get the word church. Yeah. Ecclesia, a fellowship that's called out of. Yeah. Help me here. Originally, original meaning for the followers of Christ, here it is. It meant an assembly of believers yeah. gathered together for prayer and fellowship. Yeah. My God. Yeah. I said it, I said it is an assembly of believers gathered together for prayer and fellowship. Yes. They didn't run in and run out. That's right. mm. That's mm. right. Prayer and fellowship. Prayer and fellowship. Now, the idea of them being called out by the Lord, called into oneness in Him, yes. oneness in Him, and called into the world to serve. Mm. Called out the oneness in him, amen, and called into the world to serve. I think you missed that. I said called out to be oneness in him and called, amen, into the world to serve. Yeah. It's a sad believer who say you believer and not serving in the world That's right. That's right. to make a difference. Yeah. Now, now, when Luke uses the word church, it carries the full implication of the apostles' teachings. For Paul, the favorite phrase was the body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. Amen. His letters to the Ephesians and, and Corinthians expresses the powerful meaning. For he talks about the church which is his body. And the fullness of him who fills all in all. That's in Ephesians chapter 1, verses 22 and 23. Amen. In 1 Corinthians uh, 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 chapter 12, it says, For as the body is one and has many members, 
but all the members of that one body, but many are one body, so also is Christ. For one spirit, we all baptize into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, whether slaves or free, and have all been made to drink into one spirit. Now you are the body of Christ and members individually. Yes. My God, my God. Yes. Now there are four things, four things, four things, catch this. Four things that were part of the loyalty, remember I said loyalty, mm -hmm. of the members of the body to one another. Amen. Mm -hmm. if, you, if, you, if you've if you been called out to this ecclesia, the church, mm -hmm. there are four things that that makes up this loyalty to one another. Mm -hmm. First, they were of one heart. Yes. One, heart. one heart. Secondly, they were one soul. Mm. That's right. Thirdly, they were one blessing. Mm. One heart, one soul, one blessing, and fourth, one great conviction. Yeah. Yeah. Now let me go back through that. The heart, the heart, karia, karia, karia is the Greek word. It's used by Luke, amen, in the Hebrew sense of reason, emotion, and will. In other words, they had the same emotion. They had the same will. They had, they had the same reason. Yeah. It, it stood for a person's <clears throat> entire mental and emotional activity. Yeah. In other words, I had... I had the same, I had the same will as Rachel had. Mm -hmm. Come on here. Yeah. About for other people. Say amen. amen. Now, now, and then he talks about one soul. So, so why did Luke add the soul here? The psyche, the psyche, the psyche, the psyche here is the life spirit of a person which can be touched and quickened and then filled by the Holy Spirit. Why, why did he use this? Because in essence, what Luke is saying is that the early Christians had their mind and emotions and wills open to each other. Yes. Praise the Lord. Yes. In other words, we're not closed. We're not closed from each other yes. when you're in this body. Praise the Lord. Yes. Amen. Spirit in each Enable oneness with others. You cannot have oneness with each other if you're close to each other. Yeah. That's what yeah. that's what shuts the church down yeah. from being a church when we're close from each other. Yeah. Then he talks about the one thing about which they were they were, they were one heart and soul was a resurrected Christ who lived in them. Yeah. Now, now, if there's a resurrected Christ in Rachel, it's the same resurrected Christ in, in Mike. Yeah. It's not a separate resurrected Christ. Yeah. In Mike, this in Vanessa, it's the same one. Yeah. So we must have a oneness. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Yeah. And that prompted them to know that, that, that all they had and were belonged to him. Amen. So they said that what he possessed was his own. Mm. Mm. But but uh, uh, but they had all things in common. Yeah. That goes back to chapter four, verse thirty-two. Amen. They were not willing to say, "What's mine is mine." Yeah. Right. But 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 Amen. We have all things common now. Now that's that shocks the mind of many am I right about it yeah. Yeah. but that that's what real stewardship is all things in common yeah. praise the Lord now ecclesia called out called out called out called out now now Barnabas here and and uh, means encourager encourager say encourager but then something strange happened. Something strange happened. A strange shift happened. They were walking together. They were praying together. They were in fellowship together. They had this one mind and one spirit. They, they were in a oneness together. They had loyalty together. And then something happened to the church. 
for the first time sin into the picture. Yes. Mm. Come on now. Yeah. And then it says, amen, then it says, but, but. a certain man named Ananias yeah. with, with Sapphira, his wife, sold a possession yeah. and he kept back part of the proceeds. Yeah. His wife also being aware of it and brought a certain part and laid it at the apostles' feet. And verse 3, but Peter said, yeah. Ananias, why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit and keep back part of the price of the land for yourselves? And I notice he didn't ask, they didn't, they didn't come talking, saying, man. He immediately asked them a question. Yeah. But notice here the names first. Notice the names. Ananias and Sapphira were as much a contradiction of their old nature, mm -hmm. praise the Lord, mm -hmm. as Barnabas was an affirmation of the new nature. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. What do I mean? Amen. Amen. Uh, uh, the Hebrew form of Ananias means. Yahweh is gracious. Do y'all see that? Yeah. Amen. His name means Yahweh is gracious, but Sapphira means beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Gracious yeah. and beautiful. Yeah. Now there was nothing gracious about Ananias, nor did nor anything beautiful about his wife, how they cooperated. Yeah. Say amen. amen. In the swindle pretense of loyalty, yeah. they swindle the Lord out of what the Lord required yeah. when it comes to loyalty. Yeah. Amen. And, and the body, they had heard only half of the call of ecclesia, yeah. mm -hmm. the spirit of oneness. Surely they had heard Christ call to faith in him, but they had not heard the call to Lord to, to his people. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Yeah. I should pause right there. I said, I said they had heard Christ call to faith in him, right. but they had not heard the call to Lord to, to his people. Mm. Don't have a witness. The problem was, Rachel, they pretended to give all the proceeds yeah. of the sale of the property. Yeah. Now, now here's the issue. Here, here's a real rub here. Here's a real problem here. No one had said that they had to give anything. Mm. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. But the spirit of giving to the one who has given all for the believer was very strong. No one said what he or she had was his or her own. Except Ananias and Sapphira, the deception was the sin. That's right. yeah. Did y'all see that? Yeah. That's yeah. Right. Yeah. The deception was the sin. Yeah. Yeah. We sometimes miss that. I'm going to say it again. The deception was the sin. And Peter knew it. Help me somebody. It was written on their face. Sometimes we, we try to uh, uh, hide uh, what had happened. But it was written on their faith. face. This grand uh, deception about giving all the proceeds of the sale of the property was an effort to hide the fact they were holding some kind, some of it back. Help me, somebody. Yeah. And we advertise what we're hiding mm -hmm. from God. Yeah. We think, hey amen, we're getting away uh, from the deception, but we cannot hide the deception. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Sometimes people make a lot of noise. Uh, amen. When they know they're wrong, you always know when people are wrong because they make a lot of noise. Right. Yeah. Amen. The, the careful eye, the careful eye of the one who has been uh, sets high and looks low knows it all. Yeah. Don't have a witness here. 
the spirit give a capacity to know the motive of the heart sees it and understands it all the deception is what betrayed them in their loyalty and that's what betrays the church today the deception of so many I think I'll stop right there and notice in what you expect tonight yeah. amen we wanted boldness but this is boldness yeah. we have to amen expose the deception amen. among so many of us amen. amen boldness means to declare the truth you cannot separate chapter four from chapter five is one unit yeah. praise the lord we thank you lord thank you. thank you for your word and we pray that this may touch somebody night that we will grow thereby and be the church that you're looking for in these last and evil days. Strengthen us Lord. Keep us that we may raise up a generation that's going to come to a spirit of loyalty to you and that we be called into oneness in you and into oneness into the world to serve in Jesus we pray. Amen. Next, next week, we'll continue further in this lesson. God bless you.